In this video, we'll present another non-parametric regression method called smoothing splines. So to motivate smoothing splines, let's consider uh, the model form of y is equal to f of x plus epsilon. So this is the standard form uh, that we've been looking at through most of the semester. And if you remember back in, you know, when we were studying normal linear regression, this was just beta naught plus beta 1 xi, right? We specified the form to be that. But in non-parametric regression, we said that the form of f was not specified and to be estimated from the data. And this gave us more flexibility, right? It said that we don't have to assume a line, we can have something that's non-linear and that we learn. But if we think back to the analogy uh, of normal linear regression, there we minimized the residual sum of squares. And if you remember, that was basically the sum of the yi's minus the linear form, so minus that f of x. And sometimes that's also called the MSC for the mean squared error. Now, the problem with this approach in the case where you don't specify the form of f is that we're estimating as many parameters as data points. And in that case, the solution here if you don't specify the form of f, would just be, so the solution would just be an f hat of x i, which would just be the data points y i. So that means you would actually be able to take this MSE and set it equal to zero by setting every point, uh, every f of x equal to just y. Now that wouldn't be great because then we would just be interpolating and overfitting the data and not picking up on a mean trend, right? There's always this uh, balance between overfitting. We don't want to do that because we don't want to explain the error term because it's not systematic, so it can't be, can't be explained. So there's a balance between that and then underfitting, which is, you know, maybe putting a line through data that's that has a lot of curvature in it, right? That would be problematic too. So our smoothing methods give us some, some way to, uh, to sort of navigate this balance. And we saw that with uh, kernel, kernel estimation. And another method is smoothing splines. So instead of uh, just minimizing the MSC, which on this slide is the term on the left, we can minimize the sum of the MSC and this other term that involves an integral over the squared second derivative. Well, we're going to explore in just a minute what this might mean. It's often called a roughness penalty. And the roughness penalty will uh, basically penalize certain functions for being too wiggly or too rough. And then notice that that integral term has out in front of it a multiplier lambda. Now lambda is uh, a real number greater than zero and it's a smoothing parameter so it will uh, control how much the roughness penalty matters in this minimization problem. So the first term uh, in the function controls the fit, that's the MSE, and the smaller that term is, the closer the fit will be to the data, right? So you can try to make that term very small by choosing an f that would make your f of xi very close to your y's. Then we said the second term in the function controls how smooth or rough the function chosen will be, and it penalizes functions that have more curvature. So think about why this is the case. If f of x were linear, then the second derivative would be zero for all x, and the integral would be uh, would also be zero. So that's great for minimization, but we typically don't want to work with a line; otherwise, we'd use parametric regression. Right? The the point of this is not to work with lines, but to to work with something that has some curvature, just not too much. And so that means we want this smoothness integral term to actually be positive and not just zero. But what ensures that this term will be positive but small? Well, a small squared second derivative on average, 
over the integrated region would make this integral small. And if you think back to calculus, that translates to a function that has low curvature on average. So the goal here is really for us to see that if we minimize this function to keep the fit term small, we need something that, you know, a function that fits the data well. And to keep the smoothness term small, we need something that is, uh, that has low curvature on average. Now, the lambda term is the balance, right? We don't want low curvature to be the only thing that matters, so we have to weight the fit with the smoothness. Lambda controls that trade-off. And of course, if lambda were equal to zero, then this would reduce to just the MSC solution that we mentioned uh, on the previous slide. And that solution would just be interpolation. And if we have some positive lambda, the second term helps with the smoothing. Then if we think about lambda going to infinity, uh, that converges to the solution uh, f of x hat equals zero for all i. We won't go through the details of minimizing this function, but it turns out that the solution to this minimization problem takes on a particular form called a cubic smoothing spline. So in order to understand that, let's consider a few definitions. So a spline is a piecewise function where each segment is a polynomial. And splines are often used for interpolation. So they give us a way to, you know, mathematically, uh, in a mathematically rigorous way, interpolate through some data points. But they don't have to be interpolations. And in the case of a smoothing spline, they're not. So a cubic spline is just a spline where the segments uh, uh, for the polynomials are each of degree three, so they're each cubic. So take a look at, at the um, plot on the right. Here you'll see some data points, and in these splines they're doing interpolation, which is ultimately not our goal, but our goal right now is just to understand what a spline is. And so to interpolate through each of these data points, we see two different splines. One is a linear spline, so that just means that you uh, connect the points each with a line, right? And the line will have two parameters, right? An intercept and a slope, and so uh, for each one of those lines, you have to figure out what that intercept and slope should be. Relatively easy problem. Now the green dashed line is a cubic spline, and the cubic spline uh, fits between each of the data points uh, a cubic polynomial. So one of the nice things about splines is that they are defined to be continuous and to have continuous derivatives. A smoothing spline is a spline designed to balance goodness of fit with smoothness in the resulting function. So the smoothing spline is defined in terms of the minimization of the function from two slides ago. And in this figure, uh, the dotted line represents a cubic spline. So here we have a cubic spline. And the solid line represents a cubic smoothing spline. So notice that with smoothing splines, there is less movement up and down, which is due to constraints placed on the average square second derivative, right? The, the regular cubic spline is more wiggly than the cubic smoothing spline, and that's by design. The smoothing splines are balanced to design fit with smoothness. And notice that the cubic spline fits exactly as, you know, it, it interpolates the data. Its fit is exact. And the smoothing spline, the fit is not exact. It doesn't run through all the data points. And that's because we've, we've placed a constraint for some smoothness. Now, in statistics, interpolation is typically not the goal, right? The goal is to uh, come up with some smoother function that re represents the average that could have generated the data that you actually saw. So it seems 
hopefully seems reasonable that the smoothing spline is the thing that we're interested in, right? Something a bit smoother that represents our average that generated the data. So if we know the form of the solution to be a cubic smoothing spline, then the estimation problem is reduced to a parametric problem of estimating coefficients of piecewise polynomials that show up in the cubic smoothing spline. And we won't go into detail about the mathematics of this estimation, but instead we'll implement smoothing splines in R. So at the bottom of this slide I have the function, or one, you know, one possible function that you can use in R to construct smoothing splines. And uh, the two plots will, will show uh, different values of a function of lambda, but basically different lambdas will give you uh, different fits. And so the plot on the left shows a value of lambda that is small, right? And a small value of lambda, remember, if we go back, small lambda means you're placing low emphasis on smoothness. So you're allowing for rougher fits. And so the first plot specifies uh, what's called the spar. So spar is a, just a function of lambda in R, and for reasons that we will sort of skirt around. Um, and I specify a low spar, which is uh, analogous to just a low lambda. And so there I specify it to be 0.5. And the second plot specifies spar equal to 1. And so that should tell you that, well, low spar, low lambda, that means you have uh, a more wiggly function, right? You didn't penalize enough in this case for um, f for roughness. And then a higher spar, higher lambda, means that you have a smoother function. And as with kernel estimates, there's some subjectivity here, right? You have to choose uh, lambda, and often the choice of lambda is done through sort of observation, right? Try some different lambdas and settle on one that you think is reasonable. But there also are automatic methods for choosing lambda, like cross-validation, and uh, there are some built-in methods in R that will do the cross-validation for you. So one final thing that I wanted to just mention is that remember most of, you know, an important part of statistics is quantifying our uncertainty in our estimates. So not just giving estimates, like a point estimate for some parameter, but also quantifying our uncertainty in that estimate, say by giving a confidence interval. So how would we quantify our uncertainty in our estimate of f in the case of non-parametric regression? Well, we can't really rely on parametric results like those for normal linear regression, like confidence intervals for our betas, for example. But we can use bootstrapping methods. So if you remember from back at the very beginning of the semester, we discussed a bit about bootstrapping. There was a parametric bootstrap, but also a non-parametric bootstrap. And so you can generalize some of those techniques of the non-parametric bootstrap to uh, get some uncertainty quantification for these curves. And that might look you know, something like um, bounds that you would put on this curve and you might say that you're 95% confident that the true curve uh, is covered by you know, the, the red bounds. So the true curve is somewhere in there. That would be the goal of, of using bootstrapping to construct uh, confidence regions for, um, for smoothing splines.